Hello and welcome. You're watching Tech 24 on France 24. I'm Charles Pellegrin, and coming up on today's show, we'll catch up with NASA's latest missions, a hunt to scan the universe for habitable planets, and a quest to better understand and get closer to the sun. And we'll take a look at where solar energy stands today. As panels are getting cheaper and more efficient, solar power is being used in all kinds of everyday objects. And starting with the hunt for new planets. Uh, it was literally launched by NASA from Cape Canaveral in Florida on April 19th. The TESS satellite will be scanning the skies, looking for uh, cosmic bodies where life may exist. It's expected to reveal 20,000 planets beyond our solar system, which will then be studied further right here on planet Earth. Particular focus will be directed towards evaluating their distance from a sun. Well, uh, Dan and Jay Kadilkar, a uh, France 24's tech expert, is on set with us. Uh, that task seems enormous. I mean, scouring the universe, looking for planets that might be inhabitable. How will they be able to do it? Well, the satellite called the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite will be in an elliptical orbit around the Earth, and it will be observing around 200,000 stars to uh, look for exoplanets. Now, of course, it, uh, it, it will be doing so using four cameras on board, but that doesn't mean it will be taking photographs of these planets, but rather it will use the transit method, and that's why the transit part in its uh, in the short, in the long form of TESS. So the transit method is uh, when when the satellite, in this case, observes the brightness of a star. And if there's any dip in the brightness, that could indicate the presence of a planet which is orbiting that particular star. And now that dip will be recorded, it will be further processed, and that could maybe um, result in us knowing uh, more planet candidates around different stars. And this particular satellite will carry forward the tremendous work of the Kepler Space Telescope, which uh, found around 2,600 planet candidates uh, during its mission. Well, another important mission uh, will be launched uh, this summer to study our own star, the Sun. Uh, this Parker solar, solar Probe will get closer to the Sun than any other so far. Uh, well, just how close will it get and how will it do to survive the heat? Well, this mission will be launched on July 31, and the probe will be um, studying the sun from a distance of 6 million kilometers. Now, the figure 6 million sounds enormous, but in the context of the vast distances in the solar system, it's not that big, because consider this, uh, the distance between the sun and the Earth is 150 uh, million kilometers. So that's an approximation, but you can gauge that 6, ki 6 million kilometers is not a lot. So, in fact, this will be... Uh, rather, this probe will be uh, closer than any other probe has been so far. And the primary objective of this mission is to, to study how heat moves from uh, the surface to the corona, which is the solar atmosphere. And hopefully, it will help us uh, solve the mystery of uh, as to why um, the temperatures in the corona are more than that on the surface of the sun. And, you know, the change in these, uh, or the way the solar wind is generated, the solar energetic particles are generated, that is also important uh, for us to know, because whatever changes happen on the sun, they directly affect uh, the rest of the solar system. So if we don't understand how solar wind propagates, then maybe we could have consequences, say, for our communication systems in the form of satellites. All right, well, well, as you're about to hear, uh, the scientists at NASA are impatient to have a new understanding of what's at the heart of our solar system. We will be flying through a medium that we've never been to. And every observation we are going to make is a potential discovery. So Solar Probe will help us understand all these three problems, but I'm almost certain that we will, have, we will learn about a new phenomenon that we know nothing about now. And that is really super, super exciting for us. Well, speaking of the sun, here on Earth, solar power is witnessing tremendous growth thanks to the falling prices of solar panels. But Dan and Jay, uh, improved efficiency is also an important factor, as you're about to show us with all these different objects that you brought on set with you. Uh, but what kind of technologies are helping fuel uh, this growth? Well, there is nanotechnology for one. Scientists have recently discovered that an array of nanowires uh, instead of the conventional planar solar cells, can improve the conversion efficiency by as much as 18 percent. Now, conversion efficiency is the amount of sunlight get, that gets transformed into electricity. And just an interesting uh, factoid, a nanowire is around 300 times thinner than a human hair. 
Wow. Uh, well, solar power's growing popularity can be gauged by a, a proliferation of, of new sunlight-powered gadgets, uh, like the ones that you have with you uh, today. Uh, let's have a look. That's right. We'll first start with this uh, solar-powered backpack. It's made by the French company Rejig. Now, as you can see, there's a photovoltaic uh, panel here. Now, the interesting part about this panel is that it uses the so-called surface mount technology. So what it means is that the solar cells in this particular panel, they are uh, placed uh, closer together and they are placed more accurately. So that improves the efficiency of the amount of power that is generated per, a per cell area, say per square inch or per, per square centimeter. So this can be used to charge cell phones. Oh, it's pretty useful if you uh, run out of uh, your charge on the phone and you, you want to instantly charge it and there are no sockets around. So this is a very uh, useful device. The second device we have is, uh, it's very interesting, it's a very simple concept. It's a solar lighter. It uses two parabolic mirrors. So the principle is that the sunlight gets reflected from these mirrors and gets focused on this point where you can put a piece of wood uh, or a piece of paper or an incense stick uh, <laughs> for it to burn, and it, it burns instantly in a couple of seconds. And uh, the third gadget uh, is a solar cooker. Now, both these gadgets are made by uh, a French company called Solar Brother. Mm -hmm. So the solar cooker also uses uh, the, a similar principle of light reflection. And as you can see, there are 11 mirrors here. This can be assembled very quickly. And once you fold it, it's very, it, it, it's very thin and you can carry it with you easily. So there are 11 mirrors and the way this uh, arrangement is made is such that all the light gets reflected on the, the pot, for example, here, that uh, you can cook different things. Uh, the temperature reached because of this reflection is between 80 to 150 degrees Celsius. And you, the amount of time that it takes to cook here compared to, say, a uh, gas stove is only 15 minutes more. So if you want to boil a, an egg or boil eggs, you will take, uh, say, 23 minutes instead of the conventional eight minutes. So it's very useful. You can carry it outdoors or you can also use it at home uh, if you have a big, big enough terrace and there's plenty of sunlight. Yeah, it seems perfect for a, for a picnic. Uh, well, we'll change pace now and ask ourselves a question. Could the blimp fly high once again? Well, over 80 years after the Hindenburg disaster, a French company has developed an airship that can transport as much as 60 tons of cargo, all while using a minimal amount of fuel. And they're testing it in the United Kingdom. Well, Catherine Bennett tells us more. It may not be as sleek as a plane, but the airship could be making a comeback. Different industries are now looking at airships as an environmentally friendly alternative means of transport. In this hangar in North London is an aircraft that will soon take to England skies. One of its main advantages is that it doesn't consume much fuel, because as soon as it's in the air, it only needs electricity to run. At 93 metres long, it's a mammoth craft filled with helium. It can stay in the air for 21 days in a row and even carry up to 50 passengers. And it's a far cry from the blimps of yesteryear. In the 1930s, airships were often filled with dangerously inflammable hydrogen gas, which caused major disasters. Il a suffi de 30 secondes pour que cet orgueil de la technique allemande ne soit plus qu'un amas de poudre tordue. This young French company is focusing on large models of airship. This Zeppelin that they designed is 150 meters long, as long as two Airbus passenger planes. It could be used for transporting freight containers, or even for carrying lumber harvested from remote, inaccessible regions. It can carry up to 60 tonnes, whereas a helicopter can only take five. This allows us to transport huge volumes at low cost and without almost any carbon footprint, as there is no need for a transport infrastructure, no need for roads. We can go from A to B like a helicopter can, only we do it transporting much more weight. The first models should be taken to the skies in 2022. An American company is meanwhile looking to the airship as a new way to travel. It will be a comfortable way to fly, but it's not exactly the quickest way to get anywhere. It travels slower than both trains and planes at no more than 110 kilometers per hour. Manufacturers now have their sights set on space. In 2020, France plans to launch airships into the stratosphere. 
Flying 20 kilometers over the ground, they could be used for surveillance of military bases or even nuclear sites. This is one sector where the sky really is the limit. And now it's time for test 24. Dan and Jay, you're a bit too old to be walking around with a stuffed animal, right? But well, I'm still a kid at heart, so I don't mind this. <laughs> but this turtle's got something special about it, re reassure me. <laughs> That's right. Uh, inside, there's an electronic circuit uh, with a computing board. Uh, this particular turtle has the Adafruit uh, feather computing board. Then, as you can see here, there's a switch. It's a Bluetooth switch. Then there's a battery. So all this makes this turtle turn into a keyboard. Uh, this is uh, the idea of um, a San Francisco-based software engineer, Ashley Kian. Now, as you can see here, these pads, the shell of uh, the turtle, they have been turned into touch-sensitive pads. The moment I touch it, I'm able to generate music on my computer. I'm using uh, the GarageBand application on, uh, on the Mac. So by just playing around, I can create some notes. So this is the, the fundamental idea of turning uh, objects we like into something that is more practical as well. So instead of having a conventional keyboard, which can be a bit boring, you have some examples like this one. And as you can see behind, Ashley has also created different stuffed toys that double up as a keyboard. Like here you have an octopus. She also did the same with uh, a giraffe. So yes, it's a, it's a new way of not only enjoying the, the toy, but also making it uh, more useful. Absolutely, a great way for uh, children to learn about music or to start learning different notes, etc. cetera. Uh, thank you, Dan and Jay. We'll, uh, we'll see you next week. In the meantime, uh, do uh, keep, uh, keep up with us on Facebook and Twitter, hashtag Tech24. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and do stay tuned. There's more news coming right up on France 24. Thank you.